The question says write the structure of the major organic product in each of the following reaction. Okay, in these chemical reactions we have to write the product. Let me take the first reaction. We have first reaction CH3, CH2, CH2 and then Cl is there. And we have NaI. Okay, NaI. And then we have acetone. CH3, CO, CH3 is there and heating is done. This is acting as a solvent. Okay, now pay attention carefully. You can see this is halide and this is also halide is there. Okay, so you can see this is also halide, this is also halide. Okay, you can see two halides are there. Okay, means this reaction is what? Halogen exchange reaction. You might have learned Finkelstein reaction is there. Okay, and in this case, what is the condition? You can see this halogen attached to the carbon chain should be more electronegative. Okay, and this halogen attached to the metal should be less electronegative. Less electronegative. Okay, then reaction is possible. Halogen exchange takes place. If I is here and Cl is here, reaction will not take place. So always keep in mind this halogen attached to the carbon. This halogen attached to the carbon should be more electronegative and it should be less electronegative. Then exchange uh, takes place. So what will happen? This iodine will come in place of Cl and Cl will come in place of iodine. So when Cl is coming in place of iodine, NaCl will be removed. Okay, so we got the final product. I will replace Cl. So we have the product. This is what we have CH3, CH2, and we have CH2, and then we have I is there. One iodopropane. You can see one chloropropane is converted into one iodopropane by Finkelstein reaction, halogen exchange reaction. Very interesting reaction. Okay, now we move on to the next reaction. In the next reaction, we have, uh, you can see, CH3 whole thrice CBR is there. I can draw the structure. It will be easier to complete the reaction. We have CH3 and this is CH3 and here also we have CH3. Tertiary carbon is there to this BR is attached. And we have KOH and it says alcoholic, alcoholic KOH and heating is done. Keep in mind, we have aqueous KOH as well as alcoholic KOH is there. In the reaction, if we have, if we have, Aqueous KOH, keep in mind, so it causes it causes substitution reaction, nucleophilic substitution reaction. And if in the reaction we have KOH alcoholic, it causes elimination reaction. Okay, it causes nucleophilic substitution reaction, and KOH alcoholic causes elimination reaction. So we have to carry out elimination reaction. And in elimination reaction, what we do? From alpha carbon, we remove halogen. What kind of halogen is there? Br. So we remove Br from alpha carbon. And from beta carbon, we remove hydrogen. That is how we complete the reaction. You can see Br is attached to this carbon. This carbon is alpha carbon. And next carbon is a beta carbon. You can see this is alpha carbon, next carbon, beta carbon. Alpha carbon, next carbon, beta carbon. Alpha carbon, next carbon is a beta carbon. Okay, you can see since all these beta carbon are same, CH3, 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 then only one product is possible. Okay, if different beta carbons are there, then different product will be formed. Okay, now let's carry out the reaction. This is CH3, there I can write as a, we have a CH2 and it is H, like this I can also write. Okay, from alpha carbon we remove Br and from beta carbon we remove hydrogen, so this portion is cut. This is also an example of dehydrohalogenation reaction, elimination reaction. If we remove this portion, to double one we have to introduce here to satisfy the valency of these two carbon. Okay, so we get the product. This is what CH3 is there, and then we have C double bond CH2 is there, and then we mention this is CH3 is there, CH3. So this is the product is formed, and we can see we have H, H B R is eliminated. HBr, okay. So HBr will be neutralized by KOH. So this, this is the product we get. We get alkene, okay. In the elimination reaction, we get alkene. Always keep in mind alpha carbon halogen, beta carbon hydrogen. Move on to the next reaction. Third reaction is there. We have a CH3, CH. You can see Br, and then we have CH2, and it is CH3 there. And uh, we have NaOH, water is there, means we can write aqueous. 
Okay. As I said, we have K O H equals, or we can write N A O H equals also. Both are same thing only. Will be causing nucleophilic substitution reaction. Nucleophilic substitution reaction. Okay. Nucleophilic substitution reaction. So from here, since it is a strong base, no sorry, it is a you can see strong base is there easily in the aqueous medium it can liberate OH minus ion is there OH minus ion. And uh, this is a stronger nucleophile, this is a weaker nucleophile, and in nucleophilic substitution reaction, a stronger nucleophile will kick the weaker nucleophile and occupy the space of weaker nucleophile. Okay, so now. It will attack here and this Br will move from here. So a kind of a substitution. Br minus is substituted by OH minus ion. And this reaction you can understand via mechanism in a very nice way. Okay. But anyway, we are not talking about the mechanism, we are talking about the final product formed in the reaction. So you can see in this in case of in general, if you want to remove, you can see this Br is being more electronegative, will pull the electron density, it will carry partial positive to charge, it will carry partial negative to charge. And this OH minus ion will attract, get attracted towards the CH plus. Then final product we can form, this is what we have CH3. CH, we have OH, CH2 and this is what CH3 there. There is no any kind of rearrangement because we have only uh, secondary carbon. Okay, secondary carbon. If we have tertiary carbon, then, then we can think, but you can see we have a strong nucleophile. Okay, a strong nucleophile means this reaction taking uh, us to ascent to reaction. Okay. Now we have next reaction is there. So you can see if you want to name a nomenclature, leave it, move on to the next reaction. We have a fourth one. In this case, uh, CH3, CH2, Br is there and it is reacting with KCN, okay? And we have aqueous and ethanol is there, okay? Aqueous ethanol, it says aqueous and ethanol is there. Ethanol is there, okay? So this reaction is also an example of nucleophilic substitution reaction. From here, we can get a CN minus is there, CN minus N. CN minus N is a strong nucleophile than BR. BR is a weak nucleophile. Then a strong nucleophile will kick weak nucleophile and will occupy the space of Br minus. This Br minus will combine with K plus and KBr uh, will be removed from here. So we get this reaction. This is what CH3, it is CH2 and the product is what we got CN is there, CN. Okay, so we have ethyl cyanide. This is the common name. If you go for the IUPAC name, it will be propane nitrile. We have the fifth reaction, C6H5ONA is there. Okay, sixth, fifth reaction. Benzene ring is there, benzene ring, and we have O and it is Na is there. And it is reacting with C2H5 and it is Cl is there. Okay, there is no any kind of solvent given here. In this case, simply you can remove NaCl and complete the reaction. NaCl. Because breaking up this bond will be from here, it will carry neck to charge. This is your phenoxide ion, it will be more stable. You cannot think about breaking this bond from here. Okay, sodium phenoxide is there. So, break this bond, it carries neck to charge. This neck to charge is part of resonance. Uh, we can write this is what if I remove this portion, this is double bond, uh, single bond, double bond, and then single bond, double bond, single bond, neck to charge, resonance. So you can see by breaking this bond, it is getting stabilized. And from here, you can see it will supply electron density to the carbon and Cl will pull the electron density. So Cl minus ion will be removed. This Cl minus ion will combine with Na plus. It will carry pass to charge. Okay. So we get Na, Cl is removed from here and we get, this is benzene ring is there. Then O is there. Then we have C2H5 is there. This is the product formed in the reaction. We have the sixth reaction in the sixth reaction. Okay, we have a CH3, CH2, CH2 and OH is there. And it is reacting with SOCl2. And SOCl2 is a very good halogenating reagent. What it does exactly? It removes OH and attaches Cl. Okay, we can say chlorinating agent. This is alcohol. In alcohol, it removes OH and attaches Cl. 
so it's kind of also a substitution reaction we can say so you can see in this case what happens and why it is most preferred reagent chlorinating agent because whatever the byproducts are formed you know they are in the gaseous state so these gases will escape and we get the final product okay only final product major product we have ch3 ch2 and ch2 we got cl okay and from here oh is there and this is what so and one cl is also left so one cl one h will combine then we get hcl in the gaseous state and here we have so one oxygen is also there in oh then we get so2 it is also in the gaseous state these two byproducts will escape and this is the we get the main product in the reaction move on to the next reaction we have a <coughs> seventh one we CH3, CH2, CH double bond, CH2 is there and reacting with HBr, okay, reacting with HBr is there, HBr, but it says peroxide effect is there, H2O2 is there, peroxide effect, <coughs> okay, peroxide, if peroxide effect is there, then we have to complete the reaction <coughs> based on anti-Marconica rule, if I break this bond, it will carry negative charge. So according to anti-Marconica rule, this is a double bonded system. Focus on the double bonded system. According to anti-Marconica rule, anion will attach to the carbon which has more number of hydrogen in a double bonded system. Okay, anion will attach to the carbon having more number of hydrogen. It has two hydrogen. It has only one hydrogen. Then B R minus ion will attach to this carbon having more number of hydrogen. Then obviously H plus will go to this carbon having less number of hydrogen. Then final product we get CH3, it is CH2. This hydrogen is combining with this CH, we get CH2. Okay, this bond is broken, this bond is broken. Then CH2, Br will be there, CH2 and it is Br. Okay, so one bromobutane is there. Okay, primary alkyl halide. Now you can see <coughs> last reaction we have. In the last reaction we have CH3, it is CH double bond. And we see, and we have CH3 there, and we have CH3 is there. Okay, it is reacting with HBr. But in this case, you can see we do not have peroxide. <coughs> Sorry, in this case, we do not have peroxide. And if the peroxide is not there, very interesting reaction. Because you can see, because of the peroxide, we have anti Marconica rule. And if peroxide is not there in the presence of even Br, so reaction goes according to Marconica rule. We have M rule is there, we say in short, M rule. <coughs> according to Marconica rule okay so in this case if I break this bond so Br will carry negative charge hydrogen carrying positive charge we can say partial positive partial negative is there so Br minus will attach to the carbon having less number of hydrogen you can see this is a double bonded system <coughs> double bonded system in this case this C has no hydrogen zero hydrogen and this carbon has one hydrogen so if we compare so you can see in this case zero hydrogen in this case one hydrogen then anion will always attach to the carbon having less number of hydrogen then br will attach to this carbon and h will go to this carbon then we have the final product this is what we have ch3 it is ch and one more hydrogen is attaching then becomes ch2 this bond is broken then we have C, it is Br, this side we have CH3 and this is what we have CH3 is there. You can see, we get the tertiary alkyl halide, more stable, because tertiary carb cation is present. So this is the product we have, tertiary alkyl halide. If you like this video, please share and subscribe to the channel.